In this lesson, we're going to explore brush customization in more detail. When creating brushes, everything you will need can be found in the Brush Editor panel. Expand the Brush Editor panel to show all of the properties available, but try to conserve any wasted space. This panel makes it easy to modify the brush properties while previewing those changes in real time with the Stroke Preview. You can also paint onto your canvas to evaluate the brushes. While you'll be doing the bulk of your brush modification through the brush editor, the brush engines define the capabilities of the brush, so that's where you want to start when you're creating a brush from scratch. It can be helpful to imagine that the brush you are creating is an animal. The brush engines are where I can change a bird to a mammal or a mammal to a reptile. These would be big, drastic changes to the behavior and appearance of the animal or brush. The changes made in the brush editor can be more subtle in comparison. For example, changing a pigeon to a parrot or a parrot to an ostrich. In brush terms, I could turn a pencil into charcoal with the brush editor, but I wouldn't be able to change charcoal to a deformation brush that smudges pixels unless I start with a different brush engine. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as it could be to change the brush engine of a brush. What you'll need to do is first select a default brush that is using that engine and build your new brush from that. You can use the panel on the left to filter out brushes that use specific brush engines. Let's start by exploring the contents of the brush editor. As we looked at in earlier lessons, this panel is going to show you all of the relevant properties for the currently selected brush. The contents will change depending on the brush engine you have selected. These properties are divided by sections for general, color, texture, and masked brush. Within those categories are the properties, each with numerous options, sliders, and buttons that control specific aspects of the brush. Nearest the top are the general properties, brush tip, blending mode, opacity, and flow. These are universal properties that can be applied to many types of brushes, though some of the specialty brush engines have their own unique set of properties. You may notice that some of the properties are grayed out. This is because these properties are not applicable to the currently selected brush. The indented properties are more advanced. You'll need to enable these by clicking first to the left of the name. If you see a check, the property has been applied to your brush. I can change the size, spacing, rotation, scatter, and other properties that affect the dab shape. There's also a category of color properties which control the color of your brush media or what comes out of your brush. You can lighten, darken, or vary the hue of your color, as well as control the buildup and mixing of colors. The texture properties contain the various textures that you can apply to dabs. This is a key feature for brush creation because it can really add a lot of character to your brushes. And the masked brush properties, which are only applicable to the pixel brush engine, will allow you to overlay a second dab on top of your brush to create more intricate strokes. Because Krita's brush settings are so extensive, I won't be able to cover absolutely every combination of properties that the brush editor is capable of. It's a lot. But I am going to teach you the fundamentals so that you can experiment to discover the extent of what it can do. It would take a very long time to try every possible combination of brush properties in Krita. By the time you finally did, Krita probably would have changed and added new features. That may sound frustrating, but that's actually a good thing. It means that there is a lot of room to innovate and discover new brushes. I am able to create unique brushes that no one has ever used, and that feels really cool. I'll select the basic 5 size brush, and if we look in general size, we can see that enable pen settings is checked. Pressure is selected beneath that, which indicates that the pen pressure I use when pressing on my tablet will determine the size of the brush. You can use the graph to control how much size variation you get when you press down with your pen. The horizontal axis is how hard you are pressing from low to high. The vertical axis is size variation from small to large. Pressure is the most common way to control the size property, but just to explain how these settings work, let's choose Tilt Direction and Disable Pressure. Now, when I tilt my pen in each direction, I can vary the brush size. Pressure doesn't do anything. You'll find these brush expressions in many of the properties, and you can control them in the same manner. I'll set this back to Pressure. Strength is set to 100%. This controls how much the size will vary when I use Pressure. If I make a stroke from light to heavy, you can see a lot of variation. If I set the strength lower, you can see that range is reduced. So strength will work in the same way for the other properties as well. I'll disable size, and let's look under opacity next. This controls the opacity of the strokes. Currently, my strokes and dabs are fully opaque. 
but if I reduce the strength, then I can make semi-transparent strokes and dabs. I'll set it back to 100%. If I enable pin settings and set it to pressure, then I can press lightly to make my strokes more transparent. Heavy pressure will make them more opaque. I can even combine size with opacity to get both expressions simultaneously. Flow is similar to opacity, but it controls the opacity of each dab on the stroke rather than the stroke as a whole. I'll disable opacity. For some brushes, you may want to change the flow to make the brush build up more slowly, but in this case, it creates unsightly artifacts where the dabs and strokes overlap. I'll enable scatter next. This will offset the position of some of the dabs to break up the stroke. A little scatter will give you a jagged line. A high scatter value will create a spray or splatter effect. And again, I can control the scattering distance with expressions like pressure. If I set the flow strength back to 100%, softness can be useful to make your brush dabs and strokes softer along the edges. This can help give the appearance of a wetter medium. A low value will give you the softest edges. Spacing is another important property. This controls the distance between each dab and a stroke. A low value works best to create a continuous stroke. A high value works best for creating a dashed line or a spray brush. Any brushes that have had their properties edited will show a pencil icon in the brush presets panel. Resetting a brush to its default is quite easy. Just click either on the reset button in the brush editor or the properties bar. Let's move back up to brush tip. This gives you control over the dab of your brush. For pixel engine brushes, you can choose from auto, predefined, or text. We'll only use the first two options. Auto can automatically generate dab shapes. You can choose from circular or square dabs, change the edge hardness, dab flatness, and dab angle, and create speckles within each dab to simulate bristles. For a more intricate dab, you can choose predefined. This will let you pick from a number of dab shapes, and you can even import your own, either by drawing them on the canvas and making a selection around them, or by saving them as a file. There are spacing settings here too. This works independently of the other spacing property, which is sort of extra spacing that can be controlled with an expression like pressure. Don't set the value of the main spacing too low or you'll create excessive dabs that will cause the brush to lag. I'll reset the brush again. Painting with flat brushes can be very useful. Just think about how many flat traditional brushes there are. To flatten a dab, you can either make your own predefined dab, or use the auto mode. Under auto, I'll use a circular dab and reduce the ratio to flatten the dab. Next, I'll add a rotation property and set it to tilt direction. Now I can angle my pen to change the angle of the dab. As you can see, I can easily make thick and thin strokes. Should you need to change the starting angle of the dab, you can do that in the brush tip under angle. The blending mode properties control how your brush medium blends with underlying colors. Does it simply cover them opaquely, or does it tint darker like ink or watercolor would? If it's the latter, then multiply or burn works well to give you this effect. In a sense, this property is able to change the medium that comes out of your brush. There are many more modes which give you non-traditional effects as well. For example, you can build up glowing lights with screen or color dodge. With this brush, the blending mode affects the blending of each stroke, but there's another way it can work, which I will come back to in a second. I'll set the blending mode back to normal, which is the default opaque paint. Next, we'll move on to the color properties. Here you'll find more properties that can affect the color of the brush medium. Painting mode can also affect how the blending mode works. Wash gives you a glazing effect where your dabs do not build up upon each other. To see what I mean, I'll use the multiply blending mode again. When I overlap strokes with both modes, you can see how the effect builds up more rapidly and yields more unsightly artifacts when I use buildup. For many mediums like marker, you may want it to build up rapidly, but for others where you want to overlap a stroke with more control over the opacity, wash is the way to go. The source property can drastically change the medium that comes out of your brush. For example, it's set to plain color for now, but I can also get a variety of effects using gradients, noise, and patterns. Now, instead of paint in my strokes, I'm getting something more exotic. In the middle, there are a bunch of color modes that can be applied to your brush. I'll reset this brush. These color properties are similar to the blending mode, but rather than affecting underlying colors on the canvas, they only affect the color of the dabs. 
If I enable any of these, I can also enable pin settings to control the effects with pressure or other expressions. I won't go over all of these, but let's try darken so we can see how it is supposed to work. I'll reduce the strength a bit. With my expression set to pen pressure, I can make light strokes and they appear as my selected color. But once I begin to increase pressure, my paint will begin to gradually darken. These tend to give you unnatural effects, but there are some traditional media effects you can get as well if you experiment. It is possible to combine blending modes with these dab color modes as well. We'll skip past airbrush and rate and move on to the next category. The next set of properties can add texture to your brushes. I'll reset this brush, and under Pattern, I'll first enable it, then select one of these dotted patterns. When I paint on the canvas, you can see that pattern subtracted from my paint. This is meant to simulate the effect you'd get while working on a textured canvas or with a textured medium like chalk, charcoal, or pastel. I will be covering texture in its own section, so for now I won't say anything else about it. Masked brush is something we will come back to in that lesson as well. I know that was a lot to take in, but the good news is that unless you are creating brushes, you need not touch many of the properties in the brush editor. It's okay to tweak these properties here and there, but if you find you're changing properties often, consider making multiple brush variants instead because it could be more efficient. When creating a brush from scratch, start with the brush engine, then refine the brush with the brush editor. You can choose any of the default Krita brushes and then use them as a starting point. Let's create a bristly looking brush with thick oily paint from scratch so you can see the process. I'll start with basic 5 size and reset it. I want to customize the shape of the dab first, so let's choose brush tip predefined bristle circle sparse. Now it has a different bristly appearance. The spacing is too high, so I will decrease it just enough to where I get a continuous line. I'd like to utilize texture as well, so let's enable it and add woof texture. Now I get a canvas effect. To make the bristles not so repetitive, I'll also add a rotation property and set it to tilt direction. Now when I tilt my pen, the bristle dab rotates. Now that I have defined the basic look and behavior of my brush, I can begin to fine tune it. I think I'm happy with the shape of the brush, so I'll refine the brush media. I want pressure to control the opacity of the paint, so I'll add that. Now the paint looks a little wetter. While the brush engine you've chosen tends to have the most dramatic impact on the look of a brush, with the right settings, the properties in the brush editor can make some extreme changes as well. For instance, I can add some scatter to change this from a single bristly stroke to a brush that makes fine splatters. This barely resembles the previous version of this brush. However, the behavior of the media remains the same. It's still wet-looking opaque paint. That should give you a pretty good overview of how the brush engines work alongside the brush editor. In order to save this brush for later use, you can save a new brush preset. Give the brush a unique name so you can differentiate it from the default brush. You can add a custom thumbnail as well. Either create the thumbnail first and save it as an image file, or paint directly onto the thumbnail area with your chosen color. Since the dab and stroke previews are not always helpful, the name can also help to remind you of the brush behavior or your intention when you created it. After saving, you may want to tag the brush to add it to a category. I recommend resetting the original brush you started with when you are finished. You can always rename your brushes at any time. Simply click on the pencil icon in the brush editor to change it. The changes you make to brushes will be reflected in the Krita resource files, so if you want to keep your brushes backed up, you'll need to copy them once they have been completed. If you don't want to always have to remember to manually back up your brushes, you can also do it automatically using something like Dropbox or OneDrive to back up your Krita library on a regular basis. Managing brushes in Krita can be difficult compared to other art applications. Any brushes you create will be based off of existing brushes and will be saved into the library or bundle that brush is located in. In this case, the brush I created was in the local resources, so to view the file, I can go to Settings Manage Resources, and then open Resource Folder. Look in Paint Op Presets and you'll see any new brushes and tags you created there. It's important to note that if you created any custom brush tips, those need to go along with the brush presets if you move, backup, or share them. These can be found in the Brushes folder. Deleting brushes is not very straightforward either. You need to do it from the Manage Resources dialog. I can remove anything here, including brush tips. 
Bundles are a library of resources that can package content together. It can be tedious to create a bundle since you have to select all of the content individually. If you disable some of the bundles you aren't copying content from, that makes it easier to sort through. As you can see, I have created my own bundle with my custom brushes in it. You can install this on your computer if you like. The file can be found in the resource files if you purchase the paid course. Moving brushes and content between bundles is tricky as well. Technically, a bundle file can be duplicated and renamed to a zip file, and you can access the content within. This can be helpful to extract brushes and other types of files. If you collect everything in your local resources folder by copying or importing it, you can easily save a new bundle with that content in it. To delete bundles and remove them from Krita, instead of just making them inactive, you must delete the bundle file in your resources folder. Just be sure those files are backed up if you don't want to permanently lose them.